Chapter 144. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. Sk. Some incompetent guy broke the barrier. The old man who was sitting on the sofa in a relaxed position suddenly clicked his tongue and looked out his window. What? At those words, Huang Dongsuk, who had been drunk on the sofa across from him while drinking wine, suddenly lost his energy. What the fuck? Isn't there already a pursuit party? He jumped up and hurriedly checked the movement outside the window. Sky dyed red. Roads stained with blood and corpses. The corpses walking on it were moving in the same direction all at once. It was proof that an outsider had entered the village. Wang Dong Seok gritted his teeth and glared at the old man. This is a different story. You said you erased all traces. What is this? Don't be too fussy. Only two of them entered the village. All of a sudden, the magic was broken because they discovered the demonic spirit that was the medium for the magic. After hearing the old man's explanation, Huang Dong Seok's face returned to his composure. What? Only two of them? Yes, there are two of them. They were probably hunters who happened to pass by. Hey, hey. Okay? He licked his lips with a condescending smile. Good. Hunters must be carrying some weapons, right? Somehow he managed to escape from prison, but it was still too early to be relieved. Although they scraped off the prison guard's weapons as much as possible, most of the subordinates were still empty-handed. The first priority was to secure as much armament as possible before the pursuing party found them in earnest. How are those two guys? Well, since they are the ones who broke the demons planted in the bodies of your subordinates, one must be at least a B-rank or higher magic hunter. B-class or higher magic. At those words, Huang Dongsuk rolled his eyes and tapped the calculator in his head. Hmm, of course it can't be S-class. S-class hunters are literally walking giants. They weren't idle enough to accidentally pass through these remote neighborhoods. The probability that such expensive guys who are few in Korea would show up here just to catch the villain was close to zero. In addition, for the same reason, the A-class ransom was not easy, so there was no one who wanted to become a bounty hunter. Hey! Then at most, it must be two B-ranks. The magic world is a bit tricky, but you can't beat the quantity offensive. Huang dong -so called his subordinate, who was waiting outside, and gave an order. Hunters broke in. Call all the bustards who are resting at home. There is a possibility that they are two B-class people so they attack at once. Yes, yep, I will deliver it like that. Huang dong -so murmured with a fishy smile at the sight of his subordinate, who stiffened his body at his command and hurriedly rushed out. Young. Now, the military is definitely captured. After all, you only come to your senses when you see someone die. Wang Dongsuk, only a C-level awakener, still reigned as their king outside the prison. However, this hierarchy relationship was a series of precarious tightrope walks that could end at any moment. The only reason why the villains still follow Huang Dongsuk is that he is the older brother of Huang Dongsu, an S-class villain. Hey, won't you help? Wang Dong Sok, who was about to go outside after sending his men, suddenly looked back and asked. Then the old man, who was still sitting on the sofa, didn't even look at him and just replied indifferently. As you can see, I don't like to use my body. When you've dealt with all the outsiders, call them. I will cast a spell on the village again. I will. Wang Dong Sok had a slightly disapproving look on his face, but he didn't speak at length for at his own call, he heard the sound of his men gathering outside. Everyone, get your tools. There are only two of them. After Huang Dong Suk went outside, a bee landed on the window sill in front of the old man, who was still staring out of the window with a co infused gaze. Are you here? A small smile appeared on the old man's lips. <coughs> hmm. Suo couldn't help but be embarrassed. Suddenly, the blue ghost screamed and escaped from the body of the demonic tribe. No, the villain. Then burst. Seeing the villain collapse and pass out on the spot, Ver muttered with a serious expression. The demon tribe hiding in this human body has disappeared. Suddenly, yes, it seems that there was some kind of restriction imposed by the higher-level demonic tribe. Originally, the beings of the fantasy realm are good at this kind of magic. It means that there are high-ranking demons around here. At Ver's words, Suho nodded his head with a thoughtful expression. Come to think of it, the guy who made my level-up system was also said to be a phantom shaman. Grand Sorcerer, 
Kandiaru. The level-up system he designed could also be seen as a kind of magic. Even if it wasn't to that extent, it was said that it was possible for a high-ranking demonic clan to use magic that would limit them to death if they performed certain actions. This, I think I came across a few more villains than I thought after coming here to catch some villains. Song Suho. At that time, Kong Taesik, who was fighting the undead in front of him, heard an urgent cry. Come quickly and help, the undead are coming in more and more. As the magic of the demons disappeared, the village of Yamiri became an apocalypse in earnest. If it were ordinary undead, Kang Tae Sik, a B-class hunter, wouldn't have been so flustered, but these guys were strange enough to stick together even if their bodies were cut off. Furthermore, anyway, these undead seemed to be the original inhabitants of this village. As soon as the villains took over this village, they must have annihilated them all. Kang Tae Sik was making an expression of absurdity even as he spoke. It was an extremely ordinary person's point of view to think that they would not harm citizens who could be held hostage in case their location was discovered. What the? These guys were a lot crazier than I thought. After all, these are the villains. After all, the villains have to leave the light and kill them all. Kang Tae Sik, who muttered that and smiled bloodily, glared ahead, and he cut off the limbs of the undead and shouted to Suho. Usually in cases like this, there's going to be a bastard lurking nearby. Use your summons and find him first. But it didn't have to be. Wow, wow. Because it showed up first from the other side before that. Villains suddenly appeared from all sides and started attacking Suho and Kang Taesik all at once. Ha ha! We're all gathered here after all. Even though the crisis was approaching, Kang Taesik rather flashed his eyes, and at the same time, he looked back at Suho with cold eyes and smiled. Sung Suho, you did a good job. Your role ends here. From now on, each of us is on our own. Swoop. Kang Taesik's image was erased on the spot like a lie. Suho's eyes widened at the mysterious appearance. A stealth skill? Such a traitor. Berg gnashed his teeth. Somehow, even in this situation, he seemed to be relaxed all the time, and he was hiding that ability. However, the purpose of Kang Tae Sik's stealth skill was not to escape. Keep? What, what? Big! Screams began to erupt from the mouths of the villains who were attacking Kang Tae Sik along with the undead, and blood streams gushing out like firecrackers. Ah, an assassin! What crazy! You never said anything like that! It's called magic! The atmosphere of the villains, who had been rising with one stealth skill, changed rapidly. But that was then. Sk! Where are the assassins? Whoops, Quang! The magic-type villain behind them exploded a fireball at the dying villains, spraying blood. Ah, why me? They just agreed and escaped together, and there was no such thing as loyalty between the villains. The villains caught in the explosion were engulfed in flames and rolled on the floor. But the effect was certain. Kyu! I heard Kang Tae Sik's short scream. She is revealed to be a translucent silhouette engulfed in flames in the empty air with nothing to do with him. That way, kill! When the villain who fired the fireball triumphantly pointed towards it, the villain smiled viciously and launched an all-out attack. But there was one person they forgot because they were confused by their stealth abilities. Sealard. Surrounded by the undead, Suo's low voice awakened the sleeping entity in the Sea of Death. The King of Yetis, the Lord of the Cold, is watching you. Feeling the presence's gaze, Suo confidently opened his mouth. Blessings from the Cold. Prophecy protection of the severe cold. The protection of the King of Yetis, the Lord of the Cold. Silad, Lord of the Cold, has chosen you to be its shaman. His priests can use their magical powers as his offerings to cause frigid blizzards. Woo oh oh, that moment. A white wind began to blow around Suho. Use skill cold blizzard. Requires 100 mana per second. The blizzard that turned Facade Kingdom into a glacier city wrapped around Yamiri village. Me, crazy! What's this? Blizzard! Like the cries of the greatly embarrassed villains, the tremendous cold hit them. Great! Blasphemy! The cold ice grabbed the legs of the villains who were on the ground. Hey, damn it! Legs! Both the undead and the villains, everyone's legs started to freeze on the spot. What is this? Kang Taesik, whose stealth skill was released, looked back at Suho with a puzzled expression. Thanks to the cold wind, 
the flames that had spread to his body were extinguished before he knew it. To use even natural magic, was it a druid? Kang Taesik nodded, saying that his guess was correct. And the moment he turned his head toward the villains again, his eyes flashed with the most cruelty. Among the villains, there were those who broke the ice and escaped by strengthening their legs, but they were very few. Most of the villains gathered here were only low- and mid-level awakeners. Now you are my prey! Chump, 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 chump! Kang Taesik licked his lips and jumped forward, and he mercilessly picked out only the deadliest parts of them and cut them down, neck, carotid. Wherever his dagger passed, blood spurted out. Ah! Ag! Run away! The villains, who belatedly removed their frozen legs from the floor, began to run away in a panic, but debuff, curse of the cold, is applied. Attack speed decreases by minus 30%. Movement speed decreases by by 30%. They were still struggling in the freezing blizzard. Kang Tae Sik, who was recognized as Suo's colleague by the Lord of Cold, was free from the debuff. Kang Tae Sik laughed cruelly as he killed the fleeing villains one by one. This is why I like fighting humans. Unlike the dungeon monsters, humans are really easy to kill. He shouted at Suho with an expression of bliss. Sung Suho, as a senior, I will teach you an important lesson. Just remember this one. All humans die, no matter how strong a hunter is, that's an unchanging truth. Fuck! That moment. Kang Taishik's head exploded. How can such an insignificant bustard pretend to be proud, Chuck? The villain, who blew off Kang Taishik's head with all his might, gnashed his teeth and trampled his corpse. And with that foot, he stepped on Kang Taishik's corpse over and over again and shouted, Yes, baby, everyone dies. Did you think you wouldn't die? Ah, ha, ha! And with a bloody expression, he glared at Suho, who caused this blizzard, and growled, Ruler, now there's only one baby left, porridge. But then, wake up. Immediately behind him, Kang Taishik's shadow began to shimmer ominously. Recently, I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 145 This chapter is updated by Novels.pl, the sea of the afterlife. Kang Taesik's soul was falling into the endless darkness. Is this death? The moment of pain was short, but the moment of death was extremely long. In an instant, the abyss that seemed to last forever was dragging his soul down. In the continuing fall, Kang Taesik's soul, I was looking at the flashlight. Fragments of his life were unfolding before him like a panorama. And at every moment, he was harming someone's life. Kill, kill, kill! Suddenly, Kang Taesik looked down at his blood-soaked hands. Yes, since awakening this ability, he has killed many people with his own two hands. There was never a day when the blood would dry on these hands. Even when I thought about it, I really thought I was crazy. It was fun, but even so, the period is only two years. Although he had been caught by the police for committing petty crimes before, it was only two years before he became a villain hunter in earnest and began to enjoy killing. But, clap la 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 rock. As the flashes of light continued, Kang Taesik's appearance in those memories became increasingly younger, and at the end, the memory of that day was finally revealed. Yes, that was the beginning. For a moment, a blue glow appeared in the eyes of Kang Taesik, who was falling into the abyss of death. Flash! At that moment, he saw a beaten boy in front of him. You bastard! If only you weren't there! Die, 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 die! I mean, get out and fall! Ah! Ah, Dad! I was wrong! Arg! Please! It hurts so much! Arg! Broken liquor bottle. A narrow and messy room. There, there was a small boy being trampled mercilessly by a very drunk man. In those memories, the boy's body was always covered in bruises, and he was always crying out loud. It hurts. Stop hitting me. That I was wrong. But the more I did this, the more my father's kicks became stronger. After years of harsh beatings, the boy finally realized, to avoid being beaten by my father anymore, that you have to become strong. The first way to become stronger is to stop crying. Off. Turn it off. No matter how painful or scary it was, if I covered my mouth and held back even the screams that were trying to escape, my father's beatings lessened, very little, and I had to kill them as much as possible. So as not to disobey my father. No, I had to become completely invisible. If you make a sound, your father will wake up, then my father will drink again, then again, because you're going to beat yourself up. So, I had to live as if I was not at home as much as possible. 
He held his breath so that his strong and scary father's anger would not be directed at him. Then suddenly, ah, the boy realized, the fact that there is the easiest and simplest way to avoid being beaten, ah, this will do. Why didn't I realize it? It was supposed to be like this from the beginning. So, seven-year-old Kang Tae Sik, with those two small hands, I killed my father. That was the first murder committed by Kang Tae Sik, and surprisingly, no one knew about it until now. No, no one was curious in the first place. No one could have imagined that that little seven-year-old kid would have murdered his own father. The initial posting of this chapter occurred via n 0 Bian. Police officers and doctors. Everything happened just by accident. It just ended with a drunkard getting into an accident, and so on. The boy, who had erased the existence of his father from the world through his own power, looked down at his blood-soaked hands and realized, I am strong. Yes, it turned out that he was strong, enough to kill that scary father. When Kang Tae Sik realized that fact, he was overcome with pleasure so intense that he shivered. Ah, yes, just kill it and that's it. No matter how scary a person is, even strong people, because all humans die. From then on, Kang Tae Sik was not afraid of anything, because I am stronger now, because he could kill anyone he wanted. Of course, they were, he not criminals who were crazy about murder, and they had no intention of killing just anyone. He just, I just realized that murder is an option as a way to solve a problem. As time passed, a cataclysm occurred on Earth, demonic beasts appeared. Kang Tae Sik was lucky enough to awaken as a hunter, and when he saw the demonic beasts coming out of the dungeon and brutally tearing people to death, he sighed. What? They're no different from demonic beasts. It's just that it looks a little unusual. In the end, isn't killing someone something that anyone can do, whether it's a demonic beast or not? No, in the first place, there must have been far more people killed by humans than those killed by demonic beasts throughout human history, right? To be honest, it was steamy. But that was then. The association president came to see him. Taesik Kang, did you awaken recently? What is it? Have you been quiet these days? What are you talking about, you old man? At first, I was shocked by his sudden visit. Wu Jinchol, the president of the association, was once a detective who personally shackled both wrists when he committed a minor crime. But then they suddenly set up a strange organization like the Hunter Association. And what? I was thinking about what to do with you, and a good idea came to me. Association President Wu Jinchol smiled meaningfully at himself and immediately made a strange suggestion. Taisik Kang, I created a certificate called Association Certified Bounty Hunter for you. What is that? So-called a license to kill allowed by the country. Are you out of your mind? Why? So you don't like it? Of course, I was a little dissatisfied with that unlucky face that I had no doubt would accept his offer. In the end, Kang Taesik could not resist Wu Jinchol's proposal, because honestly, it was attractive. These are people you can kill. They give you money if you commit murder. Okay. Killing people is much easier and more fun than killing demonic beasts. That's how Kang Taesik became a bounty hunter, and over the past two years, he killed hundreds of villains with his own two hands. Hehe. <laughs> I killed so many people. Kang Tae Sik's soul, wandering the sea after death, chuckled as he watched each and every moment of the many murders. But why? As their deaths piled up in the blink of an eye, Kang Tae Sik's soul was becoming more and more buried in the darkness. In the darkness, hundreds of hands came out and dragged Kang Tae Sik's soul deeper and deeper like evil spirits. Let go, you bustards! It's suffocating, breathing, wow! When I looked again, I saw that the place was a pit that Kang Tae Sik had created with his own hands. And that was then. Cluck. What a delicious looking evil spirit. Kang Tae Sik's soul suddenly trembled at the sound of the old man's laughter echoing from beyond the darkness. An instinctive feeling of rejection came over me. At that moment, Tae Sik Kang realized the fact that his soul is now caught in the middle of a magic circle made of red threads. The witch doctor grabbed Kang Taesik's soul like a spider's web and did not let go. And, come here, I will personally turn you into a demon spirit. Suddenly, a thin old man's hand appeared from the darkness and grabbed his hair. Quack! At that moment, 
a sharp pain struck me, as if my limbs were being torn apart. Kang Taesik let out a terrible scream and struggled desperately to escape from the giant old man's hands. But even that was just entertainment for the old man. Cluck. That's a good scream. It is the perfect material for making demonic spirits. Quack! Okay, doing well. You are chewing up and swallowing all the sins you have committed with your own hands. The process may be painful, but if you endure it... Beyond the darkness, the old man smiled, showing his white teeth. Because you will be reborn as a thoroughly corrupted soul who will feel that pain forever. Eventually, the red magic circle was completed. The old man's huge hand grabbed Kang Taesik's soul and lifted it up. Heh! Now you fallen demon. Now you are my... It was then. Get up! A ray of darkness that came down from a high place illuminated Kang Taesik's soul. Damn it! The power of darkness tore apart the red magic circle. What is this? The old man burst out in confusion and let go of the hand that was holding Kang Taesik's soul. Ah, this power! Kang Taesik, who was forcibly dragged up into the darkness, trembled in a different way. What the hell is this memory? Suddenly, memories from my past life that had been completely buried in my memory began to emerge like a flash of light. For some reason, even in those memories, he was covered in blood and dying. And in front of him as he was dying, he saw a man coldly looking down at him. Let me ask you just one question. As I faced those cool eyes, I asked myself this. What the hell are you? Assassination class has healing magic. Moreover, I've never heard of it being able to use debuff magic. However, the man was asking questions rather than answering his own questions. If I'm a hunter who grows every time I fight, how strong do you think I can become? Her? Kang Taesik couldn't help but laugh at that absurd question. Are you asking because you don't know that? Your shadow, it's connected to the darkness. Death is strength. As deep as that, you will become stronger. Shwa! Two deaths. Two lives. At the end, Kang Taesik's soul walked out into the world again. Night rank. Shwa! Great shadow. Kang Taesik, who was reborn as an assassin with black vapor wafting from his entire body, approached Suho, who had called him, and knelt on one knee and bowed his head. Then, with an even more ruthless spirit shining in his eyes, he asked in a very solemn manner, Who can I kill? And I thought, Suho's eyes looking down at himself like this. He said that the look in his eyes was very similar to that of the man who once killed him. Soon, Suho's cold gaze turned to the numerous villains attacking him from all directions. They are murderers who killed all the innocent people living in this village and took over the village. There was no mercy to be shown to them. Entire. Kill him. As instructed. The moment Suho's order was given, the figure of Kang Taesik, the shadow assassin, disappeared on the spot. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 146. This chapter is updated by Novels.pl. Fit. Sigh. Walk. At that moment, red solid lines were drawn one after another on the necks of the villains nearby. Sigh. Red blood spurted from its neck. It's a stealth skill. Ugh! He came back to life. Beneath the fountain of blood exploding like firecrackers, the invisible assassin's dagger began to mercilessly slaughter the villains. Oh no, the body is definitely over there. The villains, who had been elated for killing Kang Taesik for a very brief moment, were horrified and looked at Kang Taesik's body still lying dead on the floor. But, even in that split second, whack! Someone had their head cut off. Ah! Someone had their leg cut off. Save me! As they turned and ran away, there was a crazy assassin who followed them and let out a silent laugh. Skill. Stealth. The skills that Kang Taesik had during his lifetime were still maintained even now that he became a shadow soldier. Hey, it's over there, at that time. Grumble, the magic villain who burned Kang Taesik earlier, gritted his teeth and created a huge fireball again. Anyway, these ragtag bunch. There's all this fuss over just one assassin. With a confident expression, he blazed a huge flame in his hands. He'll die in one hit anyway. These words were neither exaggerated nor pretentious. 
The downside of assassin hunters was that their defense was weak compared to their strong and sharp attack power. They didn't even wear armor because it made their bodies dull. So they were half-baked guys whose synergy was only revealed when they fought while hiding servilely behind strong tanks. On the other hand, what about the magic world? First of all, since it is not a job that involves direct physical activity like an assassin-type hunter, you can protect yourself by wearing heavy and sturdy armor. Moreover, no matter how many monsters flock to you, even if an invisible enemy appears like now, using wide-range magic like this is enough. You guys, avoid it yourself. Grumble. Ugh. Dodge. Dodge. At the warning coming from behind, the villains became confused and scattered in all directions. Even at this moment, an invisible assassin was ending their lives, but right then, a huge fireball flew towards the last victim and exploded. Wow. At that moment, Kang Taesik, who became a shadow assassin, was caught in the explosion. The feeling he felt as his whole body melted in the hot flames. Ha. It was a feeling of utmost reverence and joy for Suho, who had made him a shadow soldier. And at the same time, is this a shadow? He felt the true value of this power given to him. Life and death. A person who controls the life and death of enemies at the boundary between light and darkness. Could it be an assassin? Really, this power is the one best suited to an assassin. Suddenly, the look in the eyes of the man who had first sentenced me to death a long time ago came to mind. I remembered his movements, which had a darker shadow than anyone else. Imitating the man's movements, Kang Taesik held the two daggers backwards, and his eyes flashed. That moment, swag! New power flowed into my melting body. The black vapor that formed the body came together again, his body rushed forward like a demon, and he stepped on the toes of the magic world villain who had sentenced him to his second death. Quasik! Ah! Ah! He was startled by the pain rising from his toes and tried to quickly retreat. The body of the man whose movement was temporarily blocked was mercilessly cut to pieces. Fast! Faster! Faster! Numerous straight lines were drawn on its body. A terrible scream came out of the bustard's mouth. The most cruel and beautiful blood was sprinkled. Below, the blood-soaked silhouette of a cruel assassin was revealed. His eyes and mouth... He was smiling brightly. Try to struggle as much as you can, because today I am invincible. Kang Taesik, a B-class assassin hunter. The mom, meant he became a shadow soldier. He had become the strongest Shinigami, with his only weakness as an assassin disappearing. He's like Quay. As Suho watched him fight, he was internally comparing him to Quay, the Shadow Lancer. Lee Min Sung, a Class A villain. When he was transformed by the Queen Bee, all his skills were melted away, and instead he turned into a Lancer, whose power was focused on penetrating power and speed to pierce the enemy. Instead of giving up defense, he became a dealer specializing in agility. However, Kang Taesik, who was a B-class assassin hunter, became a shadow soldier in a completely different way from Quay. His speed was a little slower than Quay, but he had stealth skills more than anything else. Quay attacks at a speed so fast that the eye can't follow it, and Kang Taesik is truly invisible. The two were shadow soldiers of the same knight grade, but just because they were the same grade did not mean that their level of power was completely the same. However, a knight is someone who fights for the king. In any case, its use will vary depending on the differences between individuals and their abilities during life. Suho's own ability to utilize the abilities of the knights at the right time and in the right place was more important. Just one thing. In Suho's judgment, the current Kang Taesik had one distinct strength that other shadow soldiers did not have. If he is that guy, he can use it as much as he wants without worrying about his abilities being exposed to others. Okay. At Burr's words, Suho smiled slightly and nodded. Pretty. He's a coveted guy. At that time, suddenly something strange happened. A heavy air descended on Yamiri village along with an indescribable roar. At the same time, something incredible happened. Coo, 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 coo. Suddenly, the village itself began to shake strangely. Roads and buildings began to bulge and merge, and huge walls began to rise up here and there. What? Ugh! Seeing that even the villains were embarrassed, it seemed like it wasn't their doing. Spot! At that time, Kang Taesik, who was slaughtering the villains, hurriedly returned to Suho and said, Master, I have something to tell you. 
At the moment of my death, an old man tried to corrupt my soul. Old man? Yes. I didn't see his face, but I think I saw the witchcraft that had been ensnaring me at that time spread out over the entire village. Why do I have to say that now? When Ver scolded him, Kang Taesik could not reply at all. It was difficult to answer that I was so absorbed in the pleasure of murder that I forgot. Solard, this must be a spell used by the demon race. Burr had already experienced firsthand the various magic spells of the demon race during the Monarch War. But the problem was that the types of magic were so varied that only the magic I had seen for the first time was revealed every time. The demons are vicious guys who enjoy capturing, torturing, and experimenting on their enemies. Thanks to that, they are adept at all kinds of bizarre magic and sorcery. The demon race's obsessive curiosity and observation skills were notorious among all races. Among them, the most famous shaman would be Kandiaru. Wasn't the fact that he was able to design a level-up system that transcended human standards ultimately the result of all kinds of experiments at the expense of countless people? One of them was the Pyramid of Amut, where strong body techniques were studied when inferring all the evidence. Suho seemed to know the intention of the old man who was trying to corrupt Kang Taesik's soul. Could it be that experiments by demonic tribes were being conducted in this village? Like the Pyramid of Amut? Suho ran between the ground and buildings that were folding and tilting at right angles and looked at the villains who were also running here and there. And I found the electronic anklets still attached to their ankles. Maybe the guy who helped the villains escape from Jisan prison was a, Lelso, a demonic tribe. Amut's pyramid was a place where many challengers over the years entered on their own, were captured by Amut, and died while being tortured under the guise of forcible physical training. The item created through numerous experiments was item, mummies, bandages. Even after the bandages were made, many people could not endure the training and died and became mummies. So what about this place? That's my opinion, too. There is a possibility that the demon tribe escaped prison to use the villains as test subjects for their own research. Before Burr finished speaking, something amazing happened. Coo, 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 coo. Suho and Burr raised their heads at the huge shadow that suddenly appeared over their heads. Then, a truly gigantic hand appeared from above the ominous sky and was coming down this way. Kang Taesik recognized the figure and urgently shouted, it's that hand. These are the hands of the old man who tried to grab me. The hand of the skinny old man who tried to snatch Kang Taesik's soul actually appeared. This time, the old man's hand was aiming for Kang Taesik's soul. Cluck. You can't miss such a delicious evil spirit right in front of you. Kang Taesik, even as a shadow soldier, trembled at the sound of the old man's voice booming from the sky. The demon race's unique nature of treating souls like toys was precisely targeting them. Of course, no one could know what would happen if Kang Taesik, who had already become a shadow soldier, was caught by those hands. But the moment the enemy revealed his true nature, Suho immediately took action. Gray. Crash. At Suho's call, Gray came running up the wall from far away. Gray had been chasing the villains from the convenience store and attacking them fiercely, and despite his cute appearance, his teeth were soaked in the villain's blood. Ver noticed Suho's intention and immediately used his skill. Kuranga, the time has come to show your changed power. Burga uses skill. Harsh command increases Gray's abilities by 50%. As a side effect of skill harsh command, Gray is cursed with insanity. That moment, Gray's eyes suddenly changed, grumbling. But this time it didn't end there. The heroic spirit of the Fang Lord's holy relic, item, Rakan's Fang, dwells in Grey. Grey has now begun his path as Rakan's true successor. Schwag! Grey's body, which was running towards Suho, was engulfed in a spiritual silver light and grew bigger. At the same time, Grey's expression, which was once cute like a small dog, gradually became more ferocious like a huge tiger. And the energy of Rakan's Fang and Kasaka's Fang is revealed in the mouth. Crumble. The roar of a wild beast that came out of Gray's mouth shook the world. Suo takes out a mana potion and replenishes the mana he lost while using the cold snowstorm. Tot! I jumped up from the slanted floor, jumped on Gray's back as he approached me, and shouted, Gray, just run! Crumple! 
With Suho on his back, Gray's thick paws kicked strongly up the slanted wall and jumped up. The target is the giant old man's grasp. Skill rigid body technique. Whether it's an illusion or a spell, Suho threw out a huge fist covered in black energy. Men are fists. Wow. A huge explosion occurred centered around that power, and the huge old man's grip was shattered. This power, the old man cried out in embarrassment. Lord of the rigid body? Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 147. This chapter is updated by novels Dapel gurgling. A thunderous roar resounded in the sky, and the huge old man's hand shattered like shards of glass and collapsed. Along with that, the distorted and distorted landscape of the village also stopped in that state. The villains who witnessed the wondrous sight opened their mouths with eyes filled with astonishment. What is that guy? How could that old man's skills be so easily? But that was the time when everyone was confused and didn't know what to do. Everyone, come to your senses. Suddenly, a fierce roar came from behind them. With that level of skill, my mana would have been completely depleted with just one hit. We can all just attack together now, instead of jumping around. The villains came to their senses at Huang Dongsuk's words. It really made sense. It was an immutable principle that the more powerful a skill was, the more magical power it required. Even if it was a B-class or even an A-class, if it had that level of skill, it would have squeezed out all the magical power it had. The evil light returned to the villain's eyes again. Yes, yes, let's go. There is only one guy anyway. Ah! As the villains each raised all their magic power at once, the momentum soared through the sky because there were so many of them. Yeah, guys. Don't forget that we've already eaten high-grade stardust. Huang Dongsuk's exciting shout further ignited their morale. Chuck, just then, Gray, carrying Suho, landed on the twisted space. The villain's all-out attack rained down on that place. Kill me! Crunch! Gray bit off the arm of the leading villain with his strong teeth and struck him. Boom! Ah! Its body flew backwards faster than the speed at which it was running. Stardust? Suho's eyes twitched after hearing Huang Dongsuk's words encouraging his subordinates. At that time, Verga shouted, glaring at the sky where the old man's hand disappeared. Little Lord, his presence has disappeared. Okay, I think he ran away. Suho nodded, recalling the sensation of the moment his fist touched. And above all, if you had just killed him with a single blow, a system message would have appeared. It was clear that he was still alive. You couldn't have run that far. I think so too. Ver said, looking around the village with narrowed eyes and seeing the strangely distorted space. If you ran far away, there is no way this genjutsu would still be in effect like this. He is definitely hiding nearby, waiting for an opportunity. Burr also explained the temperament of the guys he had experienced during the Monarch War. In essence, the people of Huanjie are cowardly and conniving people. To put it bluntly, during the War of the Lords, even Yugmund, the King of Demons and the Lord of the World of Illusions, did nothing but hide behind other monarchs and use illusions or open gates. Anyway, just like during the war, dealing with the demon spirits was extremely annoying and inconvenient. Suho asked Burr, who clicked his tongue as he recalled that time. So, how did you break their genjutsu, father? Of course, it's power. Burr grinned at that question and looked at the black energy covered in Suho's fist. No matter what tricks they used to get in your way, you tore them all down with absolute power and faith. Bang! Suo clashed his fists together and smiled, showing his teeth. I like it because it's simple. And his eyes turned to the numerous villains coming towards him. This was my first time fighting against the same people and against so many people. Not all of them were made of scraps. It was an incredible force, with B-class and A-class mixed in as well. Thanks to Kang Tae Sik, who uses stealth skills as a shadow soldier, he did well in the early fights, but his daggers were difficult to penetrate the defense of B-class or higher tanks in the first place. On the surface, it is an absolutely unfavorable situation, but why? I don't think we'll ever lose. Outnumbered? As Lon, Gi as he had the ability to use the dead as soldiers, being outnumbered was no problem for him. But I'll skip that for now because the demon spirits are still watching this from somewhere because they may be in collusion with Iterim, then? 
Suho looked down at his own shadow and opened his mouth. Essil, come out for a moment. Schwag! From the shadow of the guardian, the demon noble Essil appeared. Where are we again? You want me to fight like hell? Essil looked at the group of vicious humans coming at him from all directions and made a bewildered expression. But even for a moment, she slowly raised the corners of her mouth and stretched out her hand to the side with a belligerent look in her eyes. I like this. Sigh. A long spear appeared in Essil's hand. Demons are a fighting people who have been in constant struggle since the moment they were born. To the demon noble who stands at the top, battle is more valuable than conversation. Can I kill them all? I didn't hear an answer. Before that, the tip of Essil's spear pierced their hearts. Crunch. As if Grey wasn't going to lose, he jumped forward, exposed his vicious fangs, and started biting the guy's limbs. Suho also pulled out Vulcan's horns with both hands and showed his teeth brightly. Okay, let's make some trouble. Despite this, the overwhelming numerical inferiority still remained. But really, I don't think we'll lose. Wow, a storm of blades from Suho's twin swords struck the villains. My skills are more useful when enemies are gathered together. When Suho breaks down the enemy's formation with a wide range of skills, Gray boldly entered the enemy lines and used his large size to knock out the enemy's souls by headbutting his body or slapping his front feet. In this way, Ezel played the role of a spearman who pierced the hearts of the confused enemies one by one on the battlefield that Gray had ravaged. Their appearance reminded me of a balanced attack force. Then suddenly, Eshel tilted his head. What? Why do they cut their own throats? Push shot. Okay. Wow. Grumble. There was also an invisible shadow soldier who had been killing the enemy's lives while hiding himself without stopping even for a moment. You got an interesting guy, right? Aesil brandished his spear with a truly happy expression and shouted at Suho. Suho, these guys, they have a lot of numbers, but they are all ragtag. They're brats who don't even know how to use their power properly. At that moment, Suho had just realized that fact. After experiencing the movements of the villains in Jisan prison who are currently fighting, I found that they had very little combat experience, regardless of their magic level or skills. And it seemed like the villains fighting Suho and his group were feeling this very reality. Ha! Surrender! Please save me! At that moment, those who had run out of magical energy raised their hands and began to surrender. There were people who fell flat on the spot, crying and begging for help. Look at this! Suo, who read the atmosphere, realized a strange fact. Chin. Suddenly, Suo's steps stopped on the spot, and he shouted fiercely at the villains everywhere, firming. Everyone kneel, still living. Of course, there were people who could overcome this fate. But what about this? Suho shouted again, exuding tremendous lethality. Look to the side, your captain escaped. Wow, that furry bastard ended up. The villains were embarrassed. Meanwhile, huff! After Huang Dong Suk pushed all of his men forward, he himself turned his back and ran away in the opposite direction without hesitation. You idiots, is that going to work? Inside, he laughs at the foolishness of his subordinates who were easily fooled by his instigation. Anyway, this is why people without actual combat experience have no clue. Jisun Prison is known in the world as a notorious prison that houses the most vicious criminals. But when Huang Dong Suk, who lived there as a king, thought all, that was nonsense. What? Villain? The worst superhuman criminals of all time? Fuck. It's all ridiculous. Actually, they are villains, but how many of them have actually fought someone properly with their abilities? There are a lot of people who were caught by that bustard Wu Jin Chol before they could even use their strength properly. In any case, Wu Jin Chol was a born bustard. I don't know how they knew. But whenever the villains tried to commit a crime in earnest, they would appear on the scene like ghosts and catch them in an instant. With S-Class Choi Jong-In at the forefront. Fortunately, his younger brother Huang Dong-Su was able to escape because he was in the S-Class. Jisun Prison was where most of the helpless prisoners who were caught without any real resistance were gathered. Because of this, the villains at Jisun Prison were severely lacking in actual combat experience as people with special abilities. Not only did he not know how to utilize his own abilities properly, but he also failed to develop the ability to estimate the abilities of his opponents. 
So unless you're an S-class hunter like Choi Jong-in, wouldn't you all have been deceived by your own nonsense that you can win by simply pushing the envelope? Stupid bastards. Well, thanks to that, I've been able to use it well so far. But that too is over now. More than 50 people have already died. They brought as many as 500 people, but one-tenth of their strength was reduced overnight. If we thought positively, there were still nine-tenths left, but in reality, that wasn't the case. Last night, six-tenths of the 500 people, that is, about 300 people, rebelled against him and left. In the end, there were only about 200 people who followed him, and another 50 of them were lost. Even at this moment, I am still dying. Now there are only 150 people left, and if this continues, they will all die today. It was very painful. Actually, it was something that would happen someday. In the end, it was thanks to his younger brother, Huang Dongsu, that he was able to rise to prominence in Jisan prison. And the reason why he was able to escape by uniting the hearts of 500 prisoners was also the same. In order to escape from Jisan prison, he lied to all the villains there. If we break out of prison, my brother will come for us sooner or later. Oh, oh. So, are we going to become subordinates of an S-class villain? Of course, bastards. S-class villain Huang dong Su will become their ally. Huang dong Suk's lies moved the hearts of all the villains in Jisan prison, and everyone participated in the prison escape. But there's no way that bastard would come to save me. Even though it had been two days since the tumultuous prison escape, Huang dong Su never came to Pocheon. Then, one by one, anxiety began to sprout among the villains. I trusted Huang dong Su and made things grow like this, but there is no sign of him coming. Gradually, trust in Huang dong Suk began to disappear. The fact that Huang dong Suk's criminal record before becoming a villain was that he was a fraudster also played a role. And then finally last night, in the future, a group of people decided to take individual action instead of following Huang dong Suk, and Huang dong Suk had no reason to stop them. No, there was no power. Huang dong Suk, who was not worthy of his younger brother's name, was at best a C-level villain. But it doesn't matter. Huang dong Suk smiled meaningfully and opened the door to the hiding place where the old man was. Inspiration, I'm in big trouble. At that moment, my body froze. Wow. It wasn't just the old man in there. Countless bees were gathering and taking the shape of a woman. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon, I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 148. This chapter is updated by novels.pel. <sighs> Wang Dong Suk was so shocked that he sat down on the spot, but no one here cares about him now. Arsha, what did you say just now? The old man glared at the Queen of Bees with his mysterious eyes. Wing, Queen Bee Arsha. The alluring lover, who appeared after countless bees had disappeared, said while making eye contact with the old man. I said I would let go at this point. Why on earth? Could it be that the so-called queen was scared? Joy. She was scared, la. But despite his provocation, Arsha just snorted and crossed her arms. Suddenly her eyes turned out the window. Now, there were countless bees following him flying all over this village, and even at this moment a strong warning signal was coming from them. Arsha smiled and confidently responded to the old man's words. Then why not? She realizes that it is natural for her to run and hide when she encounters a predator she cannot deal with. Predator? Could it be that someone with the power of a rigid body appeared and was so frightened? A wound like this is nothing to me. The old man noticed that Arsha's gaze was directed towards his charred hands and an unpleasant expression appeared on her face. Restoration. The old man recited his incantation and slapped his charred hands in the air. Then, like a haze, the distorted expression of the ghost screamed and permeated above him. The old man moved his well-recovered hand and looked at Arsha with relaxed eyes, persuading her. Queen Bee Arsha, although something unexpected has suddenly occurred, it does not interfere with my plans. No, it's moving forward. Even though the power of the rigid body broke your illusion, it is true that the strength of the rigid body and the magic of the demon race are not compatible with each other. But that's the same thing over there. Tarnak was the strong lord who ruled over all elements, including goblins and orcs. 
His strong body art was the power to train the body to the limit and ultimately transcend the level of the soul. A rigid body technique that transcends the laws of physics and can even strike spiritual bodies. On the contrary, the magic of the demon race was the power to obtain physical power using the soul as an ingredient. In short, the magic and magic of the demon race could be said to be exactly opposite abilities. I was careless earlier, and the illusion was broken, but that won't happen again. The intruder is now wandering through the labyrinth without even being able to find my location. And what if you eventually find it? Then what else? All I have to do is cast another illusion. They have already entered my territory on their own, so it is impossible to escape. Because it's impossible, confidence is good, but is there anything impossible in this world? This is a world where even the absolute gods, let alone the great monarchs, are dead. The old man eventually got up from his seat due to Arsha's blatant sarcasm. Cluck, isn't this a better world? A thin, decrepit body. This body originally belonged to the head of this Yamiri village. There were many other strong humans in the village, but there was a reason why he possessed such a skinny body. I am Harmakan the great chief of the demon spirit tribe, and he is a great demon who will become the next king. Harmakan smiled the cruelest smile and raised his bony arms. Wow, then, desperate screams echoed from the air. At Harmakan's fingertips, ghosts as pale as a haze were screaming in pain. Seeing that scene, Harmakan burst into laughter with an extremely mean smile. Look at this. Do you think I'm going to engage in a clumsy direct grab with idiots who only believe in their physical strength? Heh <laughs> heh. Huang Dong Seok, who witnessed the scene while sitting in a corner, turned pale. Among the ghosts were some of his men who had been behead by an intruder a little while ago. Yes. All of Harmakan's illusions were made using the souls of people who died in this village. Considering the number of people who died in this village, it was natural for him to feel confident now. Harmakan, who was teasing the translucent ghosts like toys with his bony fingers, chuckled. Cluck, great demons always make detailed plans and fight behind the scenes. There are plenty of people who can be sent instead. I don't know who is more scared. Arsha was shaking her head as if she was disgusted by those words, but Harmakan was proud. That would be you giving up the fight and leaving. I'll give you another chance. Stay and help me. Hate. If I had known he would come here, I wouldn't have even come here in the first place. The bees that made up Arsha's body were shaking, showing the embarrassment she was feeling right now. I still lack the strength and power to deal with him. At this point, Harmakan also became curious. Dayjoint, what kind of him are you talking about, and why are you so afraid? If he followed the progress of the Lord of Strong Body, aren't you a descendant of the Lord of Plague? I can take on him alone, but if the two of us join forces, it's much better. He is not a descendant of a rigid monarch, but a descendant of a canine monarch. What? Fang Lord, what does that mean? Harmakan looked even more incomprehensible at Arsha's words. The word Fang Lord suddenly reminded me of the giant wolf he was riding. It was not unusual for a descendant of a canine lord to have such a large wolf, but there was something I couldn't understand. If he is a descendant of the Fang Lord, how can he use the power of a rigid body? I don't even know that far. But one thing is certain, he is, you have become much stronger than when I met you. Arsha chewed her lips with a perplexed expression. After getting beaten up by Suho in the past, she had no intention of confronting him. Even now, the situation is much more unfavorable than then. He lost all of his spear knights and became weak, but Suho, whom he met after a long time, was much stronger than then. The plan to train new lancers from the villains here has been completely cancelled. Since he appears anyway, they will all die. With those words, Arsha's body began to scatter into numerous bees. Then, as if it was a waste of time to even talk to him anymore, he opened the window and went out. A coward like that would succeed Koresha. The king of bugs won't appear for a while. Harmakan immediately withdrew his attention from Arsha, as if he was okay with it. It's better. The flying insects that were snooping around to prey on my plans have disappeared, so now the souls here belong solely to me. And he extended his hand to Wang Dong Suk, who was sitting on the floor with a cold gaze. Huh? Following the gesture, 
Huang Dong Suk's body suddenly stiffened and rose into the air. Huang Dong Suk, whose limbs were bound, screamed desperately in fear. Wah, old man! Ah, no, old man! Why are you doing this? Our contract is. Cluck, I had a contract with you. At those words, Harmakan smiled wickedly and his eyes lit up. He approached Huang Dong Suk, who was a powerful figure in Jisan prison, and there was one reason he induced a great escape. Our contract allows you to lead your men outside of prison, and I take the souls you killed. Yes, that's right, but why me? Why? Are you asking because you don't know that? Harmakan tilted his head and asked back at Huang Dong Suk, who was struggling in the air and protesting. Isn't it possible for you to lead your men even after you die? Quack! Quad deck! Harmakan grabbed his bony hand, and at the same time, Huang Dong Suk's body, which was floating in the air, suddenly crumpled. Huang Dong Suk, whose bones were all shattered, vomited blood and died. Harmakan's grim voice whispered to his soul It's okay to be happy. I will especially use your soul as a death knight for the demon race. Qua! Harmakan savored his meal with a satisfied smile as he heard the soul, F. Chaldeongsiok, held in his hands, cry out, I like evil souls like you. Surrender. It's surrender. I'm going back to prison. Essiel was dumbfounded as he saw the villains suddenly losing their will to fight and raising their hands in surrender. No, so suddenly? Shouldn't we rebel a little bit? What can I do? Their leader ran away first. Suho chuckled and shrugged his shoulders. However, even though the villains surrendered, the battle was not completely over. Spot! Sigh! Crook! Oops! Save me! Please stop this! Because even at this very moment, someone transparent was passing by those who had lost their will to fight and mercilessly cut their throats. For Kang Tae Sik, a shadow soldier who enjoyed killing, the moment they surrendered was the right time to kill them more easily. It's pretty good. Ver was nodding his head with a special expression on his face as he looked at the guys Kang Taesik was killing. They don't just kill them randomly, they only select and kill those with a strong scent of blood. The smell of blood? Among those villains, you're only killing those who have killed people? Yes, that's right. Suddenly, Kang Taesik appeared in front of Suho and bowed his head, even when I was alive, I could roughly tell who had committed murder just by looking at their eyes. Among them, I could immediately recognize those who especially enjoyed murder. Since Kang Tae Sik enjoyed killing, it was a talent that was close to recognizing his people. But then I died and was reborn, and now I see it much more clearly than then. It's called a villain discriminator. Suho nodded, saying it was an amazing ability. He turned his gaze back to the villains and asked Kang Tae Sik, Then who is still alive? At least they are not people who have murdered with their own hands. They were probably common criminals in prison as well. Yes, that's right. As if they had been waiting for those words, the villains all started screaming. I'm just a fraud. Well, I'm just threatening. Even though I've hit people before. Huh. Sigh. Blood spurted out. Kang Tae Sik, who quickly approached and cut off the last guy's head, returned to Suho and nodded. Sorry, that guy was a bit ambiguous, but I think it would be better to just kill him. Suho and Essil, who were looking at this scene in silence, suddenly became aware of each other and made eye contact. And Suho saw. The demon noble Eshel was talking to himself with his mouth open. I'm a little scared of this guy. Suho answered those words with his eyes. Then you are the devil. It was then. Suho's eyes flashed for a moment, and he suddenly stretched out his hand into the air and snatched something. Wow! Look at this! Suho twitched the corner of his mouth as he watched the bee fluttering in his hand. But the eyes were not smiling. The king of bugs, the lord of plague, looks pleased. Come out, Arsha! At Suho's words, the bee that was caught in his hand trembled. Recently, I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 149. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. Wow. A swarm of bees came down from the sky and coalesced into one on Suho's palm. Queen Bee Arsha. As soon as she revealed herself, she gently placed her hand on her chest and bowed her waist. It's been a while, Song Suho. How have you been? It got a little smaller while I wasn't looking. Arsha responded to Suho's words with a bitter smile. Yes. 
my body has already left this village. Currently, Arsha was floating in front of Suho in a doll-like size. This is my alter ego created by gathering scout bees that were left around. Reconnaissance? As expected, you were also part of the demon tribe. As Suho's eyebrows rose, Burr immediately grabbed Arsha's waist with a strong hand and growled. Since Arsha was so small, the size of her burr seemed very large in comparison. Arsha, who was appalled by her ferocious spirit, responded urgently. Oh no, at one point, she decided to do that, but they didn't agree, so they broke up a little while ago. Breakup? Yes, in the first place, I had no intention of being hostile towards Sung Suho. What, you are courageous people? Asil's eyes widened at the sudden appearance of Arsha. However, the person who was most embarrassed here was Arsha herself. Arsha let out a small exclamation as she looked at her Essil while being held by her Ver's hand. When I saw him from afar, I thought he was a real devil noble. It is an honor to meet the great demon noble like this. Hmm, yes, it could be an honor. In response to Arsha's polite greeting, the corner of her mouth twitched and she responded. She then cocked her nose and introduced herself haughtily. I am Essil, the eldest daughter of the Lauder family. Who are you? Ah, it was the Rotter family. My name is Queen B. Arsha. What are you guys doing now? Next to me, Suho made a bewildered expression. Arsha felt dizzy at the sight of Suho and Essil looking close to each other. I never would have thought that there were demon nobles still alive. What he meant was that there was a high probability that the devil in front of him would one day become a descendant of the demon king. And such an amazing being is now a companion of Song Suho, a descendant of the Fang Lord. No, moreover, how on earth did a descendant of the Fang Lord gain the power of a strong body? I can't even guess what's going on with the large joint. Besides, isn't it elaborate? What on earth is this small outskirt village that brings so many races together in one place? And the fact that her strength was currently the weakest among the races gathered here frustrated Arsha more than anything else. As expected, this village was a place that did more harm than good. Arsha said that she should never have set foot here in the first place and that she later regretted it. Anyway, in this situation, there was ultimately only one option given to her, to fall flat. Even if the main body had already left this place, it was urgent to avoid causing as much hatred as possible in case one encountered Suho again like today. Sung Suho, I didn't do anything here except scouting. Arsha fervently maintained her innocence. She then began to open up honestly about her past experiences. Since that day, I have been wandering around looking for places where Sung Suho is not as much as possible, but it turned out to be not as easy as I thought. The problem started when Suho suddenly said he wanted to become a guild leader and was moving around to build up his dungeon experience. Whether it was coincidence or bad luck, wherever Arsha moved, Suho would visit the nearby dungeon. From the Guardian's perspective, it was just a matter of stopping by for a day, but Arsha had no choice but to leave the area in a hurry, even though it was ominous. Then Arsha couldn't do anything, so she finally made up her mind. In this case, I would rather go to another country where Song Suho is not present. However, the problem is that the Korean peninsula is made up of Sei on three sides. Bees couldn't fly across the Pacific and Atlantic to another country. However, if you try to hide in an airplane, these days airplanes are under strict security to prevent villains from sneaking in. Given the situation, there was ultimately only one option left to Arsha, North Korea. I was just moving north to go to another country. Then I happened to encounter Harmakan near here. Harmakan? Yes, Harmakan, the war chief of the demon race, was planning to use the villains of Jisan prison to increase his power and offered me help with reconnaissance. Anyway, I guess it helped. As Burr's grip on her waist strengthened, Arsha hurriedly finished speaking. At first, I thought it was a plan to use villains who deserved to die, so I only helped them a little. If I had known it would get this big, I would never have helped. Arsha was truly aggrieved. Didn't he already encounter Suho while he was resolving the villain situation? However, I couldn't help but think that if the villains caused another incident, Suho might come to visit again. The plan that Harmakan initially told me was to kill the villains in Jisun prison and use them as material for his shaman camp. Arsha, 
who judged that Suho would not care if the villains in the prison died as long as the villains killed the citizens, readily accepted the offer. What Harmakan wanted from her was to scout out the situation within her prison and the movements of the villains after they escaped. If I just helped with the reconnaissance, she agreed to give me some villains to create new spear knights in return. But it turns out, Arsha thought that the moment the villains escaped, Harmakan would kill them all. Then, the plan was to keep some of them alive rather than kill them, and feed them royal jelly to transform them into the new Queen Bee's lancers. Harmakan especially liked souls tainted by evil. Harmakan wanted to further defile the souls of villains to make his shamans more powerful, and it was an extremely simple thing, as Wang Dongsuk, who leads them, is a villain with an extremely greedy personality, he does things on his own even with a little coaxing from his side. The moment the villains, led by Huang Dongsuk, escaped from prison and arrived in a nearby village, they liberated the freedom that had been suppressed for so long. And the sight was truly terrible. The moment when awakened people with superhuman abilities become free from the law, because it was a living hell. This village is already heavily under Harmakan's spell, and that spell further fueled the villains' desires. Suho, who was listening to Arsha's words, suddenly turned to the side. Then, the villains who had not yet been killed but kept alive tried to avoid his gaze with servile expressions. The surprise of Arsha's sudden appearance only lasted for a moment. As the story of what they had done so far flowed out of Arsha's mouth, she felt that her life was in danger. Of course, they were not directly involved in the tragedy that occurred in this village, as they had not yet been killed by the Sword of Shadow assassin Kang Taesik. But they also destroyed villages to their heart's content, and the reason they didn't kill people was just... This was because he had been confined to nearby restaurants and bars to eat the food and alcohol he could not eat in prison. Sigh. Shall we kill them all? The villains' complexions turned pale as they saw Kang Taesik, the shadow assassin who noticed Suho's gaze, raising his dagger as if he had been waiting. No, wait. Suho raised his hand to stop Kang Taesik. Don't kill anyone from now on, yes. Kang Taesik lowered the dagger again without saying a word due to his firm will. However, the reason why Suo told him not to kill the villains was by no means because he felt sorry for them. It seems that the more someone dies in this village, the stronger the magic of the demon tribe becomes. You're right. As expected, Song Suho is truly an amazing person. You can say he right through the core of Harmakan's magic circle. Arsha couldn't help but be surprised by Suho's words. The demon race's evil magic, which treated souls like toys, was a complex magic that was difficult for other races to understand. Arsha also knew this because she heard it from Harmakan, but she couldn't figure out anything just by looking at it vaguely. But it wasn't difficult for Suho. This is because system messages that I had never seen before appeared above the corpses of the dead villains. There is no soul, so extraction is impossible. There is no soul, so extraction is impossible. There is no soul, so extraction is impossible. The missing soul probably fell into Harmakan's hands. Arsha's story is that Harmakan tried to kill the villains and use them as material for a sorcerer's camp. Putting all these stories together, the answer was obvious. The more people who die here, the stronger Harmakan's spell will become. Song Suho, if you trust me, I will show you the way to get out of this village. It was Arsha who quickly stepped forward and said she would tell Suho's escape route. No matter how much of the magic of the demon spirit tribe was activated in this village, Arsha was already the one who evacuated the main body from here. But, no, Suho flatly refused her help. It wasn't that he didn't trust her. In times like these, we need to attack head on. Suho looked ahead with his eyes shining. The death knights sent by Harmakan were already walking there. Thud, thud. Thud, hollow full-body armor was walking towards me. Just looking at the ominous energy wafting inside was creepy. What is that? The complexions of the villains who had surrendered to Suho turned pale due to the enormous force. But Suho was the opposite. These guys even have name tags on their heads. The corners of Suho's mouth couldn't help but go up when he saw that. It's Harmakan. He was surprisingly a good guy, right? What a remarkable guy. 
Bear followed Suho and smiled sinisterly. Suddenly, Suho glanced at Essil, and Essil noticed the gaze and immediately stepped back. She was not to be disturbed from now on. You're creating monsters from the souls of villains with little experience. Suho smiled meaningfully, raised his dual swords, and jumped forward with Grey. Crunch! Now it was time to level up. Crumbling, that moment, the two huge hands of Harmakin sprouted from the ground, tore down the surrounding buildings, and struck the Guardian. Wow! What an amazing talent! Suho chose to attack head-on. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 150 This chapter is updated by Novels.pl The real disaster has begun. Grumble. The land and all the buildings of Yamiri village began to twist and sway like strong waves. Harmakan's spell is not just a hallucination. It's a real thing with physical power, so you have to be careful. As warned by Arsha, who was captured by Burr, Harmakan's magic circle, complete with numerous deaths, was truly showing the extremes of illusion. He who inherits the power of the rigid body, feel free to show off your tricks. With a bizarre sound of laughter echoing across the red sky. Wajikin. Harmakan's huge hand violently tore the building apart and slammed it towards Guardian. Suho, rushing forward, swung his sword and split the building in two. Above, the large buses thrown by Harmakan's hand flew one after another and exploded in front of Guardians. Karing, kwa kwa kwang. The debris from the sidewalk blocks that exploded with the explosion flew in all directions. The all out attack of Harmakan's Death Knights, the armored unit charging through the dust, began. Ah! Ah! What on earth are these? The villains who had surrendered to Suho became frantic and began to hurriedly block the Death Knight's attacks. But no matter how they looked, they had no chance of winning. There was an unrealistic disaster everywhere, with the ground shaking below and piles of buildings falling overhead. The number of Death Knights charging unstoppably onto the trembling ground was at least several hundred. On the other hand, there were only a few dozen people. They were overwhelmingly inferior both environmentally and numerically. Hey, this must be a dream. It's a nightmare. Moreover, the villains who lacked experience dealing with monsters had no idea how to deal with these death knights. The armor is empty. I've heard that before. It's a monster called Living Armor. What does a name like that matter now? Tell me how to kill him. Armor. We have to destroy the armor. Who asks that because they don't know, so how do you destroy it? Tay, while the tank blocks from the front, the dealer. Ah, so the armor is too hard. A hectic battle unfolded with villains fighting all over the place. It was then. One villain who had at least some dungeon experience shouted as he recalled his memories. No, gaps. When dealing with living armor like this, you have to aim for the gaps in the armor. A gap in the armor? Information that seemed useful at least caught the attention of the villains. Yes, yes, aiming for the gaps in the armor. It was then. Move. Suho's voice suddenly sounded from above their heads. The eyes of the villains, who looked up at him, were filled with astonishment. Bounce! Bounce! At that moment, Suho caught the large bus thrown by Harmakan out of the air with both hands. Wow! The large bus was pushed down and pinned to the place where the Death Knights were gathered. Ku kwa kwa kwang. Death Knights bounce in all directions like bowling pins. Those who were in the middle of it were crushed to death by the large bus. Suho, who landed in front of the scattered villains in a panic, grinned and showed his teeth. Because these are all my prey. Damn it. Vulcan's horn, which had been in the inventory for a while, was pulled out again in Suho's hands. Bang! Seeing him kick the ground again and jump forward, the villains who managed to step back couldn't keep their mouths shut. S you're crazy. We were trying to fight someone like that? Is it hell outside the prison? It was a moment when I truly regretted escaping from prison. However, unlike Suho's performance, the reality was not easy. Kang, 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 Kang. The damage is not as effective as expected. The Death Knights who were hit by Vulcan's horn wielded by Suho took less damage than expected, even though their armor was dented. Defense is higher than expected. Their armor was thick, and more than anything, the surface was slippery, so hitting a target didn't to land properly, and it was easy to slip. Wow, 
Do you think my Death Knights will die with just that much attack? The Death Knights, who had been thrown away with Harmakon's bizarre laughter, rose again and attacked Guardian. Boom. At that time, the Death Knight's sword made a large straight line. Suho ducked his head to avoid the attack. He simultaneously leaped forward and let go of Vulcan's horn he was holding. I hit that guy's head with my bare hands. I grabbed it and tore it off with force. Quasic. The hollow helmet was grabbed by Suho's hand and pulled out. At the same time, the empty interior of the armor is visible to Suho's field of vision. Suho, staring at the ominous spirit, or rather soul, overflowing within him, smiled, showing his teeth. Yes, as long as the outside is hard. Schwak! Vulcan's horn, which was dropped from his hand for a moment, flew through the air and returned to Guardian's hand. It will be soft inside. Quasic. Suho held his sword backward and thrust it straight into the empty hole. A silent scream erupted from inside the armor. The Death Knight has been defeated. Suho smiles. Yeah, this is what it feels like. Now there is only one. There are still a few hundred more left. Suho nodded his head at Burr's words. No, more than that, it seems like these guys can't be recycled. Yes, unfortunately, it seems that it is because the soul was consumed as an ingredient for the demon race's evil spell. As Burr said, saying that it was a waste, this message was floating above the Death Knight that had just been killed. Extracting contaminated Manara shadows is impossible. It was like the time of the Devil's Soul. But what do you think? You can just recycle it. Suho smiled mischievously as he looked at the space of the Death Knight where his head had been torn off. Yes. Go in. Follow orders. Schwag! At that moment, from Guardian's shadow, Quay seeped into the Death Knight's armor that had lost its owner. Suho grinned as he put the helmet he had torn off with his own hands back on Quay's head. Okay, if you do this, you're now a recycled Quay Knight. The name is a bit, huh? Quay seemed to want to say something but kept his mouth shut. But whatever the name, Quay's appearance wearing Death Knight armor was quite convincing. Thud. The appearance of black vapor leaking through the cracks of the hard body armor was similar to but different from that of Harmakan's Death Knights. Especially. Schwag! A long spear made of black energy shot out from the hands of Quay Knight, or rather Quay. The master's enemy is my enemy. Schwak. Quay swung the black spear and rammed it into the helmet of the Death Knight, who was attacking him just in time. Quasic. Master, I, Quay, will watch Master's back. Enter the battle with peace of mind. Quay thought to himself, that figure was truly reliable, and began the battle triumphantly. Bear was impressed by the sight and clapped. As expected, you are the Solard. If this is the case, we will be able to increase our troops as much as possible. But before he could finish his words, the figure of the shadow assassin Kang Tae Sik disappeared, and suddenly the helmet of a nearby Death Knight was pulled out of its own accord. Kang Tae Sik, who quickly jumped into it, began an invisible battle with the soul residing within it. Quasic! Sai! 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 Quasic! For a moment, numerous sounds of cutting continued, and then a message came to mind. The Death Knight has been defeated. Oh, you are good? Suho admires Kang Taesik's unexpected performance. Kang Taesik got out before he knew it and ran to pull off another Death Knight's helmet. Suho made the shadow soldier Mino dwell in the empty armor that Kang Taesik defeated. Originally, the size of the armor couldn't have been the right size, but as it was armor specially made by the great chief of the demon spirit tribe, the size was naturally adjusted to fit Mino perfectly. Boom, boom, boom. As soon a S he put on his armor, Mino charged furiously at his enemies and launched a shoulder attack. Suho dressed Tao in armor like that. As the number of armored soldiers following Suho increased one by one, Harmakan, who saw this, could not help but be greatly embarrassed. What on earth did you do? How come my death knights? You should have been good at it regularly. Gah! Enraged, Harmakan's huge hand began throwing the surrounding buildings at Guardian again. Kukwa Boom Boom. Although it was just a random attack, its power was truly daunting. The numerical inferiority remained the same. But I'm just getting used to the pattern now. Suho rode gray and properly dodged the flying buildings. While all the large-scale attacks were focused on Suho, his shadow soldiers steadily reduced the number of other death knights. Oh my god. 
The villains who were running away scattered all over the place were speechless at the sight. However, the shock to Arsha, who was still being held by Burr's hand, was much greater than that. No. What is this? The Suho who interfered with his work in the past and the Suho now have become completely different people. Power and speed. It wasn't just a problem at that level. The status has changed. There is no way something like this is possible for humans. I was just confused. What on earth happened during this time? And then I realized it again. I thought humans were the most uncivilized and weak race. The fact that there are beings among those humans that must never be touched. The fact that it is impossible for me to ever be able to oppose Song Suho with my current self or even with my abilities. The Death Knight has been defeated, has been defeated. The Death Knight has been defeated. Your level has risen. Your level has risen. Good. Because there were so many Death Knights, their levels were rising steadily. No matter how you look at it, he is an amazing guy. How about capturing them and hiring them as Shadow Soldiers? Turn all remaining villains into Death Knights and kill them. It was Ver who was plotting an evil plan using Harmakan and whispering to Suho. Not only did Ver, who was not human to begin with, have no interest in things like humanity, but he couldn't help but envy Harmakan since he said he could only turn evil souls into monsters anyway. However, the contaminated ghosts of the Death Knights could not be turned into Shadow Soldiers, so it was unclear what would happen to Harmakan himself. I will find out once I kill it. And Ver's eyes, who had been searching the surroundings while waving his antennae from earlier, flashed. I found it. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it, just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 151. This chapter is updated by Novels.pl. Meanwhile, the White Tiger Guild, which was tracking down the villains, was going through terrible difficulties. Vice President, the traces of the villains have been lost again. Is that so? Bakmiho frowned at the guild members' report. There were particularly dense forests and mountains around Jisan Prison, located in Pocheon City. So, the White Tiger Guild has been closely tracking all the predictable movement routes of villains in Bojongsen Mountain, Bulmusen Mountain, and Unjongsen Mountain, along the Hantangang River for two days already. But the result was always the same. Teams B and C also contacted us saying they missed the trace. I see. Nodding his head, Bakmiho scanned the sunny, sun-drenched ridge with a mixed gaze. Wing, a cool wind blew through the mountain ridge, in a dense forest. It was a perfect environment for villains to hide, but they were nowhere to be found. Bake Miho put together in his head all the clues he had found out so far. At some point, the villains who escaped from Jisan prison dispersed. At first, when I saw the traces, I considered the possibility that the villains were divided due to a conflict of opinion at the same time as the prison escape. In reality, that was the most likely possibility. In the first place, they were united for one purpose, to escape from prison. Wang Dong Suk, the leader, was only a C-level villain, so Huang Dong Suk's leadership could not have been maintained by the villains forever. But those scattered traces disappeared? And that too, without even one person left? Is this a coincidence? No way. A special purpose was felt in the villains' actions. In the end, the purpose could not help but come down to one conclusion. No matter how you look at it, it doesn't look like it's divided. It seems like they dispersed and promised to gather again in a specific area. The guild member nodded with a heavy expression at Bake Miho's words. I think so too. It's hard to believe, but it seems like all 500 people are moving with one purpose. I don't know what the purpose is, but the probability is high. Huang Dong Su, I guess. The guild members were silent at Bake Miho's words. He had no choice but to hold back his words. If an S-class villain had been involved, this would not have been normal. Bak Miho sighed softly and continued. In the end, the possibility that Huang Dongsu was involved in this incident is increasingly increasing. I heard that you received information from Hunter Song Suho that the probability of that happening is low. Yes, I heard that. Bak Miho muttered, recalling the information given to her by Suho. Brothers Huang Dong-suk and Huang Dong-su are not close to each other. 
This was information that Suho learned as soon as he met Kang Taesik, and in return, Baek Miho shared with Suho all the routes that the Baiko Guild is currently searching. Thanks to that information, Suho began tracking the remaining areas, with Grey at the head. As agreed in advance, they were cooperating and sharing information. Baek Miho was greatly relieved after hearing the information Suho gave her. The value of the information was so significant that Kang Taesik, a professional bounty hunter, only told it specifically to Suho. In the first place, the most representative reason why other hunters were concerned about this mass escape was the possibility that Huang Dongsu was involved. Maybe that information is wrong. No, rather than saying it's wrong, no matter how conflicted we may be, from my younger brother's perspective, I probably wouldn't want my older brother to die. Blood is thicker than water. Is that so? Baek Miho's expression became confused at the guild member's words. The most unwanted thing was gradually becoming a reality. The power of an S-class awakened person is truly a natural disaster. Wang Dongsu could never handle it with just the power of the Baek Ho guild currently deployed. Oh, of course, if you do your best, you can cause at least some damage, but instead they will have to risk their lives. Perhaps even annihilation had to be prepared. After all, the only thing that can deal with an S-class is the same S-class. After organizing his thoughts, Baek Miho finally made a decision. As expected, I have to ask my father, or rather the boss, for support. Yes, we will contact you right away. As soon as Baek Miho finished speaking, a guild member immediately contacted the president's office. And after a while, the answer came back. The boss also said he would rush to Pocheon as soon as possible. Baek Miho breathed a sigh of relief at those words. The reason Baek Yunho, the president of the Baek Ho Guild, did not step forward in this situation from the beginning was extremely simple. Because I'm busy. This was not simply a question of ransom. The very few S-class hunters were running around frantically at this very moment, taking on the most dangerous places among the country's dungeons. So like now, all matters that required legwork were handled by Baek Miho, the vice president. That was the most efficient, and it was also the most effective way to protect the safety of citizens from dungeons and demonic beasts. But now I've sold all my feet. The work they had done so far was not in vain. After all those areas were removed using the elimination method, there were only a few areas left, and one of them is right over there, Yamiri. At that moment, Baek Miho was leading the guild members to a small village in Pochon City that had not been searched until now. Then, Baek Miho suddenly remembered. Oh, now that I think about it, this is the direction that Hunter Sung Suho said he would search. In that case, Hunter Sung Suho would probably have passed by that village as well. Considering that no contact had been made yet, there was a high possibility that no traces had been found in that village either. Even if you look at it from a distance now, it looks too quiet to say anything happened. Baek Miho gave an order to the guild members with a bitter smile. We will pass through the village as quickly as possible so that the citizens will not be anxious. And as soon as I stepped into Yamiri village, the village was as quiet and peaceful as I saw it from the outside. Should I say that it is like a town on the outskirts? A quiet atmosphere where you can't even see people walking around on the streets. Creepy. What? At that moment, Bak Miho noticed the strange atmosphere of Yamiri village, and her expression hardened. And that was the same for the members of the White Tiger Guild, which was made up of beast hunters. Vice President, something is strange. I didn't feel any signs of people in the village. And that time. White Tiger Guild? The White Tiger Guild was also seen in the eyes of Guardian, who was continuing the battle by moving in the direction indicated by Burr to find Harmakan. At that moment, members of the Baiko Guild, led by Baik Miho, were entering Yamiri village. Suho, who was approaching the place through a hectic battle, could not help but be embarrassed. Suddenly, a system message he had never seen before appeared in front of him. Tiring. You cannot leave the dungeon, defeat the boss or use the hearthstone. Hmm, what? Suho knocked on the transparent wall blocking his path with a puzzled expression. Boom, boom. Is it a barrier? But an even more curious thing happened next. The presence of people in the village. Slurp. 
On the other hand, the White Tiger Guild members who were entering the village were able to walk through the transparent barrier without any problem, and with that wall as the boundary, their figures disappeared from Suho's sight. Uh, Suho's eyes widened. It seemed like there was a different space between here and beyond, bordered by this invisible wall. As Suho tried to force himself to leave, he received another message. Tiring. You cannot leave the dungeon. Defeat the boss or use the hearthstone. Aware of the situation, touch the transparent wall with a serious expression. This can't be right. Do you know anything? It looks like we are now in an instance dungeon. Instance dungeon? Suho made a puzzled expression. As far as he knew, there were two types of dungeons. Normal dungeons and field-type dungeons entered through gates. But what about instance dungeons? Regardless of whether such a dungeon existed, he had never even set foot in the gate in the first place. Did we pass through the gate without us knowing? It's not that kind of problem. In the first place, an instance dungeon is not a dungeon that exists. There was another reason why Burr became serious. Instance dungeons are dungeons developed by Kandiaru, the designer of the level-up system. And the purpose is only. It was to help Song Jinwu, who was the Shadow Lord's vessel, grow. Suho's expression hardened at Burr's explanation. A dungeon developed by Kandiaru, but how did Harmakan create it? Meanwhile, Harmakan's huge hand was attacking the guardian trapped in the village. Crumbling, Suho dodged the attack and his eyes lit up. Well, you'll know if you ask directly. Yes, it is just around the corner. Thanks to Ver, it was Suho who discovered the exact location where Harmakan was hiding. He violently smashed through the wall of the only commercial building that was unharmed despite this natural disaster and entered. Boom. Hey you guy, how dare you find me? Harmakan, who was hiding inside, gritted his teeth and recited a spell. But just because you found me doesn't mean you can kill me, because the spell has already been completed. Harmakan quickly spread his hands and unfolded his magic formation. Ka! Numerous ghosts swirled from his hands and attacked Suho. But Suo was not fooled. It's a Jinjutsu all the way. As he dodged the ghosts, he stretched out his hand and blew Vulcan's horn aside. The power of the ruler! Chop, chop, chon! A dazzling beam of light began to cut through the entire space, creating numerous straight lines. And bang! Something amazing happened. With a short groan, Vulcan's horn stuck in the empty air. Slurp. At that moment, the real Harmakan that was hiding there began to slowly reveal itself. Vulcan's horn was pierced in the middle of his bony body. Day, how on earth? At that moment, something strange happened. The moment when Harmakan, the center of this shaman group, was directly attacked, an invisible wave centered around his body and spread out in all directions. Tiring. Contaminated mana is purified. Hated mana is purified. The ghosts of the Death Knights that had been contaminated by Harmakan's shamans began to be purified one by one. But for now, that was probably good for Harmakan. This power. Harmakan was looking down at Vulcan's horn that had pierced him with a very embarrassed expression. The reason he was surprised was not simply because Suho was not fooled by the hallucination and found the place where he was hiding. This was because he noticed that the power contained in Vulcan's horn was the power of the ruler. How on earth can you use the power of a ruler? Harmakan shouted at Suho with an expression filled with astonishment. Originally, the ruler's power was not simply telekinesis. That power, as the name suggests, can only be used by rulers. It was a symbol of angels born from light and a unique ability that allowed them to fly in the sky. Their sky soldiers could fly using wings, but their rulers could fly without wings and the ability that made it possible was the power of the ruler. But how? How on earth could a mere human being use this power? Surely there are fragments of the rulers. No, that can't be possible. Harmakan, who saw Suho's appearance right before his eyes, was able to make a statement. It's clear that he's an unusual human, but hasn't he been using the power of a sea, anin lord, or a strong body lord ever since? A force that is opposite to the ruler's. Then suddenly, no wait, Harmakan's eyes soon began to become filled with fear as he realized the incredible truth. No way you, descendants of the Fang Lords? Descendants of the Lord of the Strong Body? No, that can't be. 
It was impossible to inherit the power of monarchs born in the dark and at the same time use the power of a ruler born in the light. But there was just one exception. You are the Shadow Lord. Stand tall. At those words, Suho, who had been running to defeat the surrounding ghosts and death knights and finish off Harmakan, suddenly stopped. Then he looked a little embarrassed and muttered, Oh, I got caught. And, sigh. Suddenly, his eyes looked around at the fallen death knights around him. Then there's nothing you can do. Shadow extraction is possible. Shadow extraction is possible. Numerous messages flowed above the shadows of purified death knights. Suho slowly raised the corner of his mouth with a somewhat relieved expression. Get up! Shh. At that moment, numerous shadows surrounding Harmakan began to rise at once. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 152 This chapter is updated by Novels.pl Ah, Wang Dongsuk. His soul was screaming in the dark, shedding bloody tears. His entire body, except for his face, was bound in blood-stained chains. The chain not only wrapped itself around his body, but also passed through his soul, or was rooted at one end. This chain was the curse of punishment that Harmakan engraved on Chalkalitha's soul and the prison of his sins in which he would remain locked up for eternity, even after his death. Ah, Wang Dong So cries out in pain. There was no way his soul could escape this infinite pain. All he can do is, screaming, crying, suffering. All I could do was grit my teeth and shed bloody tears in this hellish prison that was squeezing my soul to the limit. It was then. Get up. Finally, a voice of salvation was heard above his head, calling to his soul. Wang Dong Sok raised his head, shedding bloody tears. Patter. At that moment, the chain broke. Harmakan's curse, which seemed to last forever, was dissipating. The limbs were liberated. Wang Dong Sok raised his body. But, ah! The bloody tears did not stop flowing from his eyes. The chain of curse was broken, but the prison of sin that imprisoned him was still constricting his soul. Armor of Evil Spirits The Death Knight's curse was specially created by Harmakan to trap evil spirits. Even though the chain of this armor was broken, it still squeezed Dong Sok Chok's soul to the limit and caused him terrible pain. But to a Death Knight, pain is power itself. Ironically, in proportion to the pain Huang Dong Sok felt, the armor he was wearing became stronger. So that, elite level. The spirit of Huang Dong Sok, wearing the armor of an evil spirit, rose from the shadows, shedding bloody tears. He became a shadow soldier, but the pain he felt remained, and the number of evil spirits like him gradually increased. Shadows. Ah! Full body armor with swirling black vapor. Terrible screams came out from the mouths of dozens of death knights wearing evil spirit armor created by Harmakan. It was a cry of pain and at the same time a roar of anger towards Harmakan, who had dressed them in such terrible armor. Full force attack. At that moment, an order from the Guardian was given to them. Harmakan could not help but be taken aback by their fierce, fierce attacks. Oh my! Harmakan hurriedly summoned ghosts to counter their attacks. Sigh. At the same time, he pulled out Vulcan's horn that was stuck in his body, and blood spurted out. Harmakan formed a water hole in the air with the blood and shouted a curse. You evil spirits who dare to rebel against me, cursed be you all. At that moment, the bloody smell spread all around him. Harmakan, the war chief of the demonic tribe, uses skill, damage amplification, increases the damage received by those cursed. Even a normal attack will result in fatal wounds. Amplification of damage? Suho's eyebrows rose as the system messages appeared one after another. Harmakan's curse was applied to all shadow soldiers. Then, the attacks of his ghosts began to cause much greater damage to the shadow soldiers. At the same time, Harmakan unleashed a new curse. The land of death will come here. Harmakan, the war chief of the demonic tribe, uses skill, exploitation. Harmakan recovers health equal to 2% of the damage inflicted on the opponent. Schwag! Then, whenever the ghosts attacked the shadow soldiers, Harmakan's wounds from Vulcan's horn began to heal quickly. Burr was amazed by the amazing appearance and shouted to Suho, Soul Lord, this guy is good at curses. I know. The connection is quite good. Should I call him the great chief of a tribe? 
a curse that amplifies damage and then absorbs a certain amount of the amplified damage. It was a fairly annoying connection, but it means nothing to me. Suho looked at the messages that appeared in front of him with a meaningful smile on his face. A curse has been detected. The treatment begins with the effect of blessing, healthy longevity. Three, two, one, the task has been completed. Schwack! Harmakan's curse that resided in Suho's body was instantly washed away and disappeared. The blessing received from Kandiaru, the great shaman of the demon race, healthy longevity, has overcome the curse of Harmakan, the great chief of the demon race. It is clear which of the two is superior. At the same time, Harmakan also noticed this and looked at Suho with an expression of astonishment. Kandiaru's blessing? As expected, you are related to the Shadow Lord. Could it be his successor? It was a surprise at first, but soon Harmakan began to feast on Suho with eyes filled with greed. Hey, is there such a windfall? I thought today would only be a loss, but I never thought I would discover such valuable research material. That moment, woo, all the ghosts around Harmakan were swirled around and sucked in. At the same time, Harmakan's momentum began to grow bigger and bigger in front of the Guardian. Crumbling. Harmakan, the war chief of the demon race, appears. Harmakan escaped from the body of the head of Yamiri village, who was possessed by him, and revealed his true form. Gah, gah. At that moment, the death knights and shadow slave soldiers who were freed from the ghosts rushed at him all at once with explosive force. Kwong. Surprisingly, all of them were bounced back by a repulsive force that exceeded the momentum of the rush. Ah! At the center of it all, a strange energy was swirling around the body of Harmakan, who was bursting out laughing. Harmakan, the war chief of the demonic tribe, uses skill, thorn of pain. A thorn of pain? As the shadow slave soldiers were instantly annihilated with just one blow, Suo frowned. It's a skill that reflects the damage received and returns it to you. Of course, Harmakan himself could not be safe from pain and damage, but the problem is amplification of damage and exploitation. The curse skill used before was the problem. You share the pain, but you increase the damage your opponent receives by amplifying damage, and at the same time, you recover with exploitation skills. Isn't the linking of skills truly extremely efficient? He's a really fun guy. Suho chuckled and pushed back all the Shadow Slave soldiers who were repairing their damaged bodies, and after he ordered all the Shadow Soldiers to kill the Harmakan Death Knights that were still swarming the village. Esil! Now that he has discovered the boss mob, he decides to go all out on this side as well. Schwag! Vulcan's horn, which Harmakan had pulled out of his body and thrown away, flew through the air and was caught by the Guardian's hand. Esil, who heard Suho's call and rushed over, cast spirit form without saying a word. Vulcan's horn feasts on the devil's soul. Equip item, Vulcan buff. Desire for destruction is applied, increasing physical damage by 300%. Oh, devil's horns? Suddenly, two horns sprouted on the guardian's head, and Harmakan's eyes filled with astonishment. How can a descendant of the Shadow Lord use the power of a demon noble? But it's still too early to be surprised. Kangshin, Giant's Armor, The Wind in the Meadows, Gang Body Art, Suho applied all the skills to his body. Every time that happened, Harmakan's eyes grew bigger as if they were about to pop out. This is ridiculous. No matter how much he is a descendant of the Shadow Lord, how can he possess so many different powers with a mere human body? The now gigantic guardian walked towards Harmakan, his silver hair flowing. I know that. They say my father was a necromancer. Then what am I? Long strides. As he approached Harmakan, the smile on Suo's lips grew stronger. Bang, 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 bang! The two fists, engulfed by the Guardian's powerful body technique, began to rain down on Harmakan in earnest. A hug, the explosion erupted from each shot. The aftermath turned the entire area upside down. Hey, Inum! No use! Harmakan gritted his teeth and shouted, repelling all the attacks. No matter how much of Kandiaru's blessing you have, the thorn of pain is a curse to me. Harmakan, the war chief of the demonic tribe, uses skill thorn of pain. All pain and damage Harmakan receives is shared with the player. I'm crying. At that moment, blood poured out from Suho's mouth, who was attacking without hesitation. As Suho becomes stronger, the returning force also becomes stronger. 
Seeing this, the corner of Harmakin's mouth twitched and a bizarre laugh burst out. Cock! Yeah, I know you're a big guy, but how long can you last? Boom, boom, boom. Of course, blood was flowing from Harmakin's mouth, which was taking the Guardian's attack intact. But Harmakan was confident. You know what? This is an instance dungeon created with Kandiaru's legacy. And I am the king of this dungeon. That means all the ghosts who died on this earth are giving me strength. Instance Dungeon Kandiaru's legacy was discovered by chance in the world of illusions. Since I began studying it in earnest, Harmakan's power has become incredibly strong. It was because of this that he, who was just an ordinary tribal chieftain, was able to rise to the level of war chief. You only have Kandiaru's blessing, but I am different. I, Harmakan, am a disciple of Kandiaru, the greatest shaman of the demon race. Kandiaru's Disciple The implications of those words were truly enormous. The power of Kandiaru, the great shaman who designed the level-up system, was once so great that even the next monarch of the demon race was afraid. His power was such that Harmakan became war chief just by discovering a part of Kandiaru's legacy. So, no matter how much Kandiaru's blessing protects the Guardian. This land of death, the instance dungeon, was also Kandiaru's legacy. Ha ha! Go for it wherever you want. The stronger your power, the more it will eventually eat away at itself. But then, you have a long tongue. Creepy. For a moment, Harmakan couldn't help but feel an eerie feeling at Suho's words. Now wait a minute. Something was strange. Now that I think about it, Suho has been sharing all the pain from before and hasn't stopped attacking at all. Are you sick? Of course it hurts, but what do you think? Suho was smiling, even though blood was bleeding from the corner of his mouth. I'm also confident in my tenacity. When Suho lay down to sleep, Burr would sit next to him and tell him old stories. Although most of the stories were things that Burr had personally seen and experienced, there were also some stories about Sung Jin Wu's younger days that Burr had heard about. My father also did something called a job change quest. The profession was first given to his father was said to be a necromancer. It was probably the first job given according to the design of the level-up system, gradually increasing strength until the size of the bowl became suitable. However, his father had grown beyond the design of the system, and he was able to immediately become a Shadow Lord. At that time, his father's level was only 40. However, even though he was over level 40 and was looking at level 50, he wasn't doing any job advancement quests. The reason was obvious. The level-up system is solely for creating a vessel for the Shadow Lord. The job change quests were all just a fade, and in the end, they were just steps for my father to grow into a suitable person. That's why Suho couldn't be a necromancer, a shadow lord, or anything else. Suho's eyes shined intensely as he looked at the top section of the status window, which had been blank from the beginning. Therefore, even if you don't have a job, even without job change quests, what do you think? It's okay if I decide. For now, he just trusts this strong body he inherited from his father. All you have to do is use all your strength to crush and crush the enemy that appears in front of you and move forward. Just do that first and that's it. So now I'm a barbarian. Do 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 do. Barbarian. A warrior who withstands all pain with tenacity and attacks with all his might against a powerful enemy. I decided that way. Tiring. You have learned skill martial arts one. At that moment, his two fists gained even more strength. Cock. Finally, a scream of pain came from Harmakan's mouth. Recently, I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance. Chapter 153. This chapter is updated by Novels.pl. He village was quiet. It was too quiet, so it even looked peaceful. Baek Miho also thought that way until she found out the truth. Vice President, this house is empty too. There's no one in this mall either. As she continued to hear reports, she frowned and looked around her. I just don't know. What on earth happened in this town? That shouldn't be the case, but if at least a human body had been found here, there would have been some clue as to what was going on. However, she checked all over the village, but there was no one anywhere. How is this possible? It was a situation that made absolutely no sense. If all the villagers had left the village, 
at least there should have been traces of their movements. But not even the slightest trace remained. It's like, doesn't it seem like all the citizens of this town have disappeared in an instant? Vice President, none of the villains at Jisan Prison have the skills to cause this phenomenon. Yes, I know. In the end, there was only one thing to doubt in this unrealistic situation. Is it possible that a gate has opened somewhere in this town? It's realistic, but there's no blue fog. Yes, to say that a dungeon had occurred, the blue fog flowing from inside the gate was nowhere to be seen. Baik Miho picked up her cell phone with a serious expression as she continued to hear reports from the guild members who were searching the village. I need to contact the association first. It was then. Damn it, above their heads, a crack appeared in the clear sky. Hey, over there, look at the sky. All the hunters' heads rose upward at the sound of someone's shout. Damn it, damn it, and that moment, the cracks in the sky cracked and splintered even more, and began to shatter and collapse like glass. Gurgling. What? Everyone gather together. Yep. As soon as White Tiger's abstract command was issued, the White Tiger guild members spread out in her village and gathered around her at a tremendous speed. Ready for battle. Cha-cha-cha-cha. Even before her command was over, the eyes of the White Tiger Guild members, who had already completed all battle stances, were burning with fighting spirit. But something even more surprising happened next. Finally, the transparent barrier that surrounded the entire village of Yamiri, like a dome, shattered. Let's go. At that moment, the hunters of the White Tiger Guild covered their noses in surprise. Woof. This, this smell. Suddenly, the terrible smell of blood began to emanate from all directions. I thought the sky would collapse, and the ground would collapse, or the buildings would collapse, but that expectation was completely different. The scenery of the village had not changed at all. The only thing that has changed is that people who had disappeared have reappeared. But it was anything but peaceful. Numerous corpses with white bones exposed were strewn about on the blood-covered floor. The village was spread across the village in such a terrible way that it seemed as if life had been sucked out of it. Could it be that all these citizens have disappeared? But then, yes, it's a person. Hunters saw, on top of the tragedy revealed like this, a man standing tall in the middle of it all. Baik Miho immediately recognized who he was and opened her eyes wide. Hunter Song Suho? Ah! Only then did Suho raise his head and turn his gaze to the hunters of the White Tiger Guild who were looking at him. And when he made eye contact with Baik Miho, he smiled faintly. It just so happened. I didn't want to bother counting them all, but could you count them for me to see if there are 500 people? Yes? At Suho's words, the hunters were startled and turned their heads to look at the white skeletons around them. Then all these corpses? And my eyes grew wide. Umg, he's a villain. All these corpses are villains. What? Surprisingly, the ankle bones of corpses that had turned white were filled with electronic anklets. It's true. Then how can these many villains? You killed that person by yourself. After confirming the truth, everyone's attention once again focused on Suho. Even amid so many gazes filled with extreme astonishment, Suho just sighed, wiping away his blood and sweat-soaked hair. After. I feel uncomfortable. Even if you level up, the only thing restored is your physical strength. My clothes were still soaked with blood and sweat, so I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. I guess I should go back and take a shower. Trudging. I flinch. When Baik Miho saw Suho slowly walking towards him, he barely managed to avoid taking a step backward without realizing it. There was something strange about him. I didn't feel this way when we met yesterday. What on earth happened to him? No, what on earth is that guy? It was so strange. The Suho I met today felt like a completely different person from the Suho I met yesterday. Baik Miho's senses, which had raised his beast transformation skill to the limit, were screaming for him to run away from Suho right now. Baik Miho. Yes? Seeing Baik Miho startled, Suho chuckled and passed by her. And just keep things simple. Please do some post-processing here. As you can see, I am alone. Oh, and the bounty is all mine? Baik Miho finally mustered up the courage to urgently call Suho over and ask him the most important thing. If these corpses are all villains, where are all the citizens who lived in this town? No way, everyone is dead. 
At those words, Suho lowered his head for a moment and stared at his feet. Bekmiho's gaze followed him and went down to his feet, but there was nothing there, other than his shadow. Could it be that all the citizens are buried underground? Ah! Kia! When Suho suddenly raised his head, Baik Miho was startled and screamed. Then, seeing Suho cover his mouth with both hands in surprise, Suho said with a grin. Fortunately, there seemed to be quite a few people still alive. Go towards the village hall. As Suho said, I went to the village hall and found quite a few people passed out there. Everyone's complexion looked bad, as if their blood had been sucked by some kind of vampire, but their lives were still alive. What the hell is this? What? All Baiko guild members, including Baikmiho, looked at Suho again, with questioning eyes. But Suho just shrugged his shoulders, and said nothing. Couldn't there have been a villain who absorbed the vitality of others? It's a good idea to save them up to use them whenever you need them, and you'll be able to manage hostages effectively. No way. The Baiko guild had all the information about the villains at Jisan prison. There was no such similar skill anywhere. So what is it? Has someone been hiding such a skill like Suho said until now? Vice President Just then, the guild members who were searching near the village hall returned to Bake Miho and reported, The bodies of many dead citizens were found in this area. When we checked the citizens' causes of death, they were all caused by the skills of the villains listed in the information. I don't see any other bounty hunters around. I, except for Hunter. Okay. Bakmiho nodded his head. Her mind was still confused. What on earth happened in this town? Citizens who were killed by villains outside the community center and citizens who were trapped inside the community center and had their life sucked out of them. But, one thing is certain, Hunter Song Suho. This man killed all 500 villains. As a result, he saved the lives of all the citizens who were still alive. He is, he was a hero, Hunter Song Suho. Bakmiho, who understood the situation, walked in front of Suho, who was about to return home. Then she bowed politely and said hello. Thank you. Thanks to you, the citizens of this town were able to survive. As soon as Bakmiho finished speaking, the hunters of the Baiko Guild who were standing behind her all bowed towards Suho. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Suho's expression couldn't help but become serious as well, looking at their solemn expressions. White Tiger Guild. Suho was able to see why they were the most respected guild in Korea. Numerous hunters attacked dungeons chasing only money. No one criticized their actions as they pursued practical interests and engaged in battle. Because it was only natural for a person with the ability to chase money. But, at least it wasn't the hunters in front of her. These were hunters who were truly hunting down demonic beasts to protect the citizens. Sensing their sincerity, Suho also bowed his head politely and responded to their greetings. Suho was sitting leisurely on a mountainside far from Yamiri village, watching the White Tiger Guild rescue survivors. Solord. Suddenly, Burr's voice came from behind him. This guy still has some strength left. Take one step. Yep, Harmakan, who was lying down with his head buried behind Suho's words, hurriedly lifted one of his legs. His trembling legs looked even more pitiful. Elite Knight Grade. Thanks to defeating Harmakan and raising the level, the number of shadow soldiers that can be stored has also increased. Thanks to that, Suho was able to extract Harmakan's shadow, and this was the result. It's an elite knight level. Harmakan seemed like a very difficult person to deal with, but he became the highest ranking soldier so far. However, just because he had a high grade, did not mean he had good physical strength. Since Harmakan's true power lies in powerful curses and magic, he was suffering greatly from this simple pretense. He has committed evil deeds so far, so he will continue to do so from time to time. At that time, a shadow soldier suddenly appeared in the empty air. Then he knelt in front of Suho and earnestly bowed his head and asked, Please give me a name too. Oh, now that I think about it, there was this guy, Suddenly, Suho's eyes looked at him. Kong Taesik was a bounty hunter. His talent as a shadow assassin was confirmed in actual combat. However, the name above his head was different from the first time. Night rank, I guess it's because the number of shadow soldiers that can be stored has increased, but your level has already risen as much as mine? 
It was level one at first, but how much did this guy do in just one day? Suo thought for a moment as he looked at Kang Taesik's soul, which was solemnly awaiting his disposition. Name, name. Suo thought about the name for a moment, then smiled and opened his mouth. Kira. It was because I suddenly remembered the name of a character in a cartoon I watched a long time ago who had no hesitation in committing murder. From now on, your name will be Kira. Thank you, Master. As Suho chose the name, the soul of shadow assassin Kang Taesik turned his bowed head even lower. At that moment, information was updated above his head. Kira Level 5, Night Rank. Recently I created a game for Android Energy Idol Tycoon. I could use a little support in promoting it. Just download it and play for a while. Thank you in advance.